Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all excellent. It was inevitable that on this rack mount gear odyssey that I'm on at the moment that I would have to try one of these, a Pod Pro. This is a Pod XT Pro that was sent to me by my buddy, Brian, who's been sending me so many cool things to try on the channel. And what I like about it is, one, it's red like a pod. Two, it's rack mounted. Three, we kind of have the uh, menu from the red bean, but we've got preamp style knobs over here. So it really kind of does look the part of a rack mounted preamp. On the back, it's even cooler because you have a whole bunch of digital ins and outs. That's kind of what makes it the pro version as well as a USB jack. So this can act as your interface and you can use the software editor and there's reamping ins and outs, which I think is really, really handy. The other thing is that these at the moment are going for really, really low prices on places like Reverb and eBay. You can consistently see them listed for less than 300 Australian dollars, which is a lot cheaper than even just like a dedicated distortion pedal or, you know, reverb pedal or something like that. And this has a bunch of preamps in it. It's got cab models, it's got delays and reverbs and effects galore. So let's see if the Pod Pro is worth the price point. We're gonna do this in a couple of different ways. I'm just gonna show off a couple of uh, what I would consider like the essential uh, garden variety amp models. There are so many amp models that this is in no way gonna be a comprehensive video where I go through all of them. I'll just show off some that I like. Then we'll try it with some external IRs. And then at the end, we'll try it as a standalone effects processor. Let's do it. All right, let's go. I wanna break this down into a couple of different elements. We're gonna start off with just a couple of basic amps using the built-in cab models. We'll circle back around and load up some IRs with those amp models. So basically bypassing the built-in cabs. I'm gonna be using an external IR loader. And then at the end, we'll just hear some effects on their own. Now, let's just do the basics. I wanna hear if I can get a decent Fender, Vox, Marshall, and like some kind of boogie or Bogner high gain sound out of this thing. Am I asking too much? Let's find out. But I am using the Line 6 Gearbox editor for this, which uh, is really handy because it means I don't have to set up a second camera and try to film that tiny display on the Pod Pro. But I do like that I've got it here and I can actually twist the physical knobs if that's something that I wanna do. So let's start off with the 1964 Blackface Lux. This is a Fender style model. Uh, and what I've found is that I really like the sound of this built-in 4x12 cabinet, the Green 20s. I'm gonna be using that on a bunch of stuff. I know it's not really an authentic choice with this, but I'm just gonna use what sounds good. So where have we got stuff? We've got the drive at eight, the bass at seven, the treble at six, and the volume at about six. What am I using? A 57 on this cab. Uh, the gate doesn't really need to be on. What have I got in the stomp? I've got a compressor, so let's turn that off. I've got some post EQ, which is really, really essential with this. I'll start with it off and everything's just gonna sound kind of like harsh and digital fizzy, right? Which isn't really digital fizz, it's just uh, probably these cab models. But let's turn that off and I've got some reverb on at the moment. I've got the vintage plate. I'm gonna leave that on just so I have a little bit of verb and let's just uh, play around with the settings here on my strap on the neck pickup. <laughs> Before I tweet the amp, let's turn that EQ on. That's kind of getting squishy. I don't mind that drive on there. I'll bring that down. Uh, maybe a little less bass and a little more treble. It's not terrible. And let's try this compressor on there. This is, I'm guessing, the Dynacomp model. Mm -hmm. 
is this okay? This is kind of cool. It's a little bit kind of bright and bitey, but I like that kind of driven sound. <laughs> Alright, maybe let's try a Tube Screamer in front of this. Uh, let's go to... what is it? It's going to be Screamer in here. Let's tweak this in. That's totally fine, I'm sure if you put that in a mix and played it really loud live, uh, nobody would really complain. It, you know, it doesn't feel as good as, you know, an Axe FX3 or even a Helix or something like that, but it's fine. I don't mind that at all, and the core amp tone there ain't too bad at all. All right, let's, uh, I've dialed in some of these presets in advance, but I'm going to tweak them as we go. I want to hear like a Vox style thing. This probably isn't the best guitar to do it, so I'll grab my Les Paul with P90s. Okay, this is the Class A15 amp model. I'm using the matching cab in there, and this is a bridge pickup, which is a TV Jones P90 on this guitar. <laughs> I like how by default it comes with the brilliance up really high. Maybe that's a little in-joke or something like that. Uh, does that sound like an AC-15? You be the judge, let me know in the comments. But uh, the counter question would be, is that usable? And, uh, you know, like most of the things in the pod, I always find they're kind of usable. But again, let me know in the comments. Let's uh, move along to like a plexi style thing. Uh, yeah, let's do this. I'm going to stick with this guitar because I like the way uh, this one bites with the bridge pickup. So I, I'm, oh, I'm not using the green 20s. I'm using the green 25s, the built-in cab there. And it's just amp and again, that same post EQ on everything to just get rid of the fizz. <laughs> Maybe a drive in front of all of this. Let's go with, oh, let's hear a fuzz actually. I wonder if I can do a kind of faux EJ thing. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Wow, 
way better than I expected. Let's add a big delay on there. I've got the stereo delay. Uh, let's see, mix maybe around 40%. Uh, it's offset, so you're going to get different delays on each time. We're going to talk about this particular setting in a little bit, but uh, let's just hear this. And you know what? I want some more gain. <laughs> That's the worst Eric Johnson impression you're going to hear today, but as for the tone, uh, it's fun. You know, I don't think it necessarily feels anything like playing a fuzz through a plexi, but I didn't expect that. Again, I'm going to swap over to my PRS single cut and I want to do some chugga chugga stuff next. If you haven't already, you should go to Plague Scythe Studios YouTube channel and check out uh, the kind of pod odyssey that they went on. And one thing that I picked up watching their video on the XT is that the Line 6 big bottom model together with this uh, green 25s is, it's, it's basically the sound of like early era gent, which I can't really play, but I'm just gonna play some chunky riffs with this. And this is totally a guilty pleasure. This is like up there with a HM2 into a JCM 900 or a metal zone with the mids pulled all the way out into a practice amp for me. You know, it's not your everyday tone, but it just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> That is, <laughs> oh, I'm sitting here laughing. That's really fun to play, you know, that is the sound of a particular era of guitar music, whether you like it or not. Uh, the big bottom model is really, really fun. Let's uh, hear the tread plate. I gotta hear the tread plate. Where's my tread plate setting? Did I dial one in? Uh, no idea, but let's, uh, oh, it's right here, the dual rectifier. So this is with the green 20s again. Uh, let's see what this sounds like with some big, uh, you know, sus two chords. <laughs> It's like the most static, most unresponsive amp I've ever played. And for that reason, it's totally awesome. It's just this wall of absolute filth. Tread plate, oh, this is good. We're really into the good stuff now. Uh, one amp that I noticed that is actually pretty cool, I wanna try to get a lead sound, is this ecstasy model. And uh, you know, I've called it roundies. If you're an Australian and uh, you think of ecstasy, uh, it's a little in-joke. It's not something that I personally enjoy, but if it's something you personally enjoy, you're like a roundy from time to time, it might make you feel like... <laughs> And 
that's a lead tone right there. It's not the greatest lead tone I've ever had, but it's also not the worst. One more, I want to have a play around with this Ubershal model. Let's have a listen to where it's at at the moment. This is using the built-in V30 cap. <laughs> My apologies to Jeff Loomis and everybody at Nevermore for butchering that riff. Uh, what did I butcher worse, the EJ impression or the Nevermore impression? Let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, that's the Uber shell. These high gain amps are really, really fun. Uh, they're kind of their own thing. And, you know, the whole early gent thing, I think, kind of made use of the fact that these are like the opposite of a dumble. You know, they're not super touch responsive. You can gate them and slam them with insane amounts of gain and they're going to stay really stable and they like low tunings. They're not going to kind of just fart out and crap their pants like a tube amp would. So yeah, you know, this is definitely, I think, the kind of target if you want to use the actual built-in amp modeling, built-in cab modeling. But let's ditch the cab modeling now and have a listen to it with one of my IRs that I'm going to load up from my Axe FX3. Okay, let's hear this with an external IR. I've loaded up my LTTV Mix 2 Impulse, which you can get for free in the video description. Just follow the link, no strings attached. Go and make some music with it. That would make me really happy. But first, let's hear this green 25s built-in cab sim with the plexi model and then i'll load up my own ir <laughs> That's not a massive surprise that I like that a whole lot better. I'm really used to the sound of that particular cabinet. And I think in any modeling scenario, having your own cabinet impulse that you're really comfortable with is just kind of going to like ground your tone and give it a particular character that you can get used to and that you can work with. So that's just with a single amp. I'll grab my single cut back and let's try one of those ridiculous high gain apps. I'll try a different impulse. I'll use one of my V30 impulses. Well, let's go back to that ecstasy tone in there. And again, I'll disable the cabinet sim. I'll actually turn the delay and the reverb off as well. Let's check this out. <laughs> I really like this boost and EQ block. I think it was like a boost comp in the Line 6 M series that I really liked when I had one of those. But yeah, in front of this, uh, kind of cool, especially on the neck pickup. <laughs> That's probably my favorite high gain lead sound that I've got out of this. And uh, the IR really, really helps in that particular situation. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of stomp based effects that you can throw in front of the amps here. Some of them uh, like the synths are really, really fun, like this uh, synth lead. Let's have a listen to this. Some weird stuff going on there and there's like a sub octave thing happening. But what I want to show off now is not using the amp modeling or the cab modeling and using this as a standalone effects unit because I figure a bunch of people might want to get this as an alternative to stuff like the Echo Pro or the Mod Pro and it can kind of do some of that stuff. 
For this section, let's hear the effects on their own. So I've disabled the amp and the cab modeling, and I've actually placed the pod in an effects loop of my Axe FX3. The pod is running 100% wet, and it is in its own parallel signal path. So I'm just kind of mixing it in to taste. Let's start with the delays. I've got the stereo delay dialed up, and I've got it last in the chain. This way, it's actually going to be stereo for whatever reason if you place it pre, even though you've got the amp block disabled, it sums everything to mono. So let's just leave it back here. Uh, what have I got going on here? I've got a quarter note delay, but I've set the delay ratio to 75%. So that'll give me that quarter note dotted eighth note thing. Nothing else going on at the moment. Check it out. <laughs> So it's a pretty stock standard digital delay. One cool thing I can do because I am running this 100% wet is to add an EQ. So what I've done is I've rolled off everything above 2.3K and below 95 Hertz. So I've warmed the delays up. What I'm gonna do is kind of turn the channel volume up a little bit just to bring the delay level up. We get this. That's immediately got a little bit more vibe. And again, because of the way I've set this up, if I wanted to say, add a modulation block in here, like this sine chorus, I can do it. And this is gonna give me a really kind of cool washed out echo effect. I'm liking where this is going. I could use the stomp block here. I've got to be careful with this. I'm going to bring, I'll leave the drive all the way up and I'm going to introduce the gain. So I'm just going to kind of use this to distort the delays. Maybe I won't have the drive so high. Let's just bring in the gain a little bit and turn it on. Okay, that's not enough level. Let's bring it up some more. Still not enough, I mean too conservative. There we go. So this is really distorted now. Let's bring the drive down. And now I've got this really, really low fire kind of like a low bitrate delay or something like that. It's just distorted and washy and kind of disgusting, but it has character, which I like. And using the editor, it's kind of easy to dial that in. Now, if you just go back to the delay on its own, of course, there are different delay modes we can try, like an analog delay with modulation. I really like that mode and again using that EQ trick and adding on that chorus in there. So this is kind of a cool thing, you know, if I wanted to go to the modulation and add something a little bit weirder, like maybe I wanted to add this tape eater effect to it, uh, we get this. Really, really loud there. I'll bring the uh, flutter down and the distortion down and the mix down just a little bit. I'll also turn the EQ on. Now 
That one's kind of cool. It does have that tape warble effect on it. Let's hear that with some distortion. <laughs> That's kind of cool, that's got a nice character to it. I think I like that better on a clean sound. So that's just talking about the delays. I'll bring up a few other little presets I've made in here. Let's check this one out. This is using the hall reverb right at the end. I've got a little bit of sine chorus again, the same kind of trick, and a little bit of stereo delay happening. The reverbs won't run at 100% wet in here, so I've had to use the delay going into the reverb. Uh, this is you know, it's going to kind of speak for itself, but this is probably one of my favorite patches that I've dialed in on the Pod Pro so far. almost like a thickening and widening effect in there. It kind of reminds me of a couple of the things you might hear in like the old Yamaha SPX90, which is another classic rack mounted effects unit. Let's hear a few more of these little presets I've dialed in. I'll go back to a clean sound. So this is using the sample and hold mod block. Let's just check out what this does. It's basically a random filter. <laughs> That is pretty fun and pretty wild as well. Like a lot of these units as well, the really, really wacky effects, you have to be very conservative with how you dial them in. Uh, where's another one that I really liked as well? This chorus and delay, I think this is kind of like a similar idea, uh, except this time I'm running the delay, which is a stereo delay into the modulation. I like this again on a dirty sound. <laughs> A little bit of that kind of late 80s George Lynch thing going on there with the way we run the effects. So, I mean, this doesn't sound like an even tide or a high end rack effect, but you can dial in some of that kind of mid 80s, you know, like the 12 bit rack era, some of that kind of lo fi uh, character in there with these sort of delays and choruses. And of course, if you're running this in front of an amp, uh, stuff like the filtering, and you know, there's a bunch of synths and things like that in there, which I'm not going to explore here because uh, they kind of bring back bad memories of old guitar stores where, you know, rather than show off what the Fender Twin model sounds like, you would get the patch, which is like, <laughs> you know, the random sample and hold into the metal zone model into, I don't know, some like crazy multi-head delay with the feedback all the way up. And isn't it wild that it can do this thing? You're like, yeah, but I just kind of want it to sound like an amp. But if you're subtle and conservative with the effects and you stack blocks up like this and you run it in a parallel chain, it's pretty cool, especially for the money. Uh, much in the same way I was saying with just the amp modeling alone, if you use it with IR loading, you know, it's nowhere near as bad as I remember for core amp tones. And again, you know, you can get these things 
pretty cheap, especially compared to uh, you know what you might pay for a modern distortion pedal or a modern digital delay pedal. You get a lot of that functionality and it's in a cool rack mount unit. And if you only wanted to use it for the effects and not the amp modeling, you've still got the amp modeling in there as a backup. And you can use it as a reamping device and you can use it as your interface and it's got digital ins and outs because it's the pro version and it's red and it sits in a rack and rack mount gear is cool. So yeah, there's uh, there's the Pod XT Pro. That's what I thought about it. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Did you have a Pod XT? Did you have the XT Pro or was it one of those things that, you know, because it was rack mounted and because it said Pro and because it cost a bunch more money, it seemed uh, like unobtainium. It's not really unobtainium anymore. Like I said, you can grab these really cheap at the moment on Reverb and places like that. So yeah, that's the Pod XT Pro. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Be good to one another. I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.